week I read a cute story about a little boy and his dad who were taking a field trip to the Empire State Building. The plan was they were going to ride the elevator all the way to the top so that they could be on the observation deck and then have a bird's eye view over the city. Any of you ever done that? Been up on top of the Empire State Building? Some of you have. So you can imagine how excited this little boy was when he got in the elevator with his dad. And the elevator started to rise, and the boy was amazed as he kept seeing the floor numbers just tick off one after another, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. But then all of a sudden, the boy started getting anxious. It seemed like the higher the floor numbers went, the higher his anxiety level went. And finally, when it got up to about 90, he looked at his dad and he goes, Dad, does Jesus know we're coming? <laughs> <laughs> the boy thought they were certainly on the elevator for heaven. Does Jesus know we're coming? That's a question that I'd like for us to begin with today as we uh, dig into the words that Jesus shared with his disciples in that upper room because Jesus wanted to assure them and he wants to assure us, yes, he does know we're coming. And he knows when we're coming. Not only does he know that we're coming, he's preparing a place for us. Not only is he preparing a place for us, he's going to come back to us and he's going to take us to that place. And that's good news, especially since we live in a world that's so full of troubling news and when our lives can often be so full of troubling news. Maybe you're at a point in your life right now where your life has been dealing with some troubling news. Here's some news that people... Uh, that I've ministered to through the years have shared with me that troubled them. The surgeon said to me, your loved one is not going to make it. The doctor said to me, your tumor is malignant. The police officer said to me, your son's been in an accident. My boss said to me, your position's been eliminated. My spouse said to me, I've filed for divorce. A military officer came to my house and said to me, your husband has died in battle. When news like that hits us, it just turns our world upside down and we find ourselves just spinning all around trying to get our equilibrium. And if you've ever been in that kind of a position and you've experienced that, then you can sense what it was that the disciples were going through that night in the upper room with Jesus. Because that night, as they were talking around the table, they were getting hit with troubling news like one wave from an ocean after another. And the first part of that troubling news had to do with what was going to happen to Jesus. Jesus had been telling them that he was going to die. And in that room he said, I'm going to be leaving you for a while. And this was really hard for these disciples to accept because they had forsaken their former way of life to follow this Jesus. And now all of a sudden, is he going to forsake them? Why was he going? Where was he going? How long was he going to be gone? And what were they supposed to do until he came back? These were the kinds of questions that must have been swirling through their hearts and their minds. Jesus' disciples were having a hard time dealing with that troubling news. And then all of a sudden, they got more troubling news. Jesus told the disciples, one of you is going to betray me. They couldn't believe it. How in the world could one of them, one of his followers, betray him? And so they asked Jesus, which one of us is going to betray you? And he said, it's the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it into the dish. And then he dipped it in the dish and he gave it to Judas. And immediately Judas left to commit his dirty deed. The disciples were reeling from this news of betrayal. And then more troubling news came. Jesus told them that Peter, their fearless leader, was going to disown him. Despite Peter's bold promise that he was willing to die with Jesus, when the heat was turned up, he would melt in fear and denial. And just when the disciples thought, well, there can't be any more troubling news than this, they got more. Jesus said to them, by the way, you're all going to desert me. The disciples were shell-shocked as they listened to all this troubling news. Death, denial, desertion, betrayal. It was more than they could handle. And their lives were literally turned upside down 
and their hearts were troubled. And then do you recall what Jesus said to them? How he responded? He said, don't let your hearts be troubled. What he was literally saying was, stop letting your hearts be troubled. Now, I can imagine what the disciples must have been thinking at that point. And if you were in their sandals, you might have been thinking the same thing. Seriously, Jesus? That's it? Just stop letting your hearts be troubled? Don't worry. Be happy. Everything's going to work out fine. Just stick your head in the sand and your troubles will all be gone? Is that what Jesus is saying? It's not. That's not what he was saying at all. He knew their hearts were troubled, but the truth is, his heart was troubled more than theirs because Jesus knew the injustice and the torture he was about to face at the hands of the Jewish religious leaders and the Roman soldiers. He knew the wrath and the punishment and the abandonment that he was going to experience from his heavenly Father because of our sin. Jesus knew all of those things and his heart was deeply troubled. And yet, he was more concerned about their troubled hearts. And so Jesus wanted to give them a cure for their troubled hearts. And that cure was to trust in him, and more importantly, to trust in what he was about to do for them. Jesus wanted his disciples to know that the troubling times that we go through in life are not the end of the story. They're just a chapter of the story. And the story ends not on a troubling note, but on a triumphant note. That's what Jesus wanted his disciples to hear. Far from deserting his disciples, Jesus was going to go and design a place for his disciples. And once that place was prepared, Jesus would return so he could escort them to their heavenly home, a place where they would be forever free from the troubles of this life. Jesus wanted his disciples to have the peace of knowing that the place he was preparing for them was a place where they could live forever in the presence of God and with those who have gone before them. And Jesus wants us to know that those promises are for us too. What I want to do for the next uh, few minutes is just slowly go through those promises with you and let you think about what they mean for your life too. In my Father's house are many rooms. That means there's room for you. You don't have to worry about getting to heaven's gates and then finding a no vacancy sign when you get there. There's plenty of room for all the followers of Jesus. By the way, you ever wonder who's going to be in the rooms next to you? I've thought about that at times. Wouldn't it be cool if next door was Adam or Moses or Noah or Elijah or Peter or maybe mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or husband or wife or son or daughter? kind of fascinating to think about who we're going to get to mingle with. Obviously, we're going to get to see everybody in heaven, but just be interesting to see who's in the apartment next door, right? And think about the conversations that we could have. I could picture myself talking to Noah and trying to learn more about this ark that he built, and then I could see him asking about these cruise ships that he's heard about with the Norwegian cruise line and these speedboats and all. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of conversations we have when we get to heaven, right? Well, here's his next promise. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Notice those last two words, for you. So in other words, he's preparing a place with you in mind. It's for you. Can you imagine what kind of place that's going to be? And then he says, I'm coming back to take you to be with me. So when Jesus has prepared a place for you, he's going to personally come back and escort you to your new home. We don't know when that time will be. Sometimes from an earthly perspective, it seems like Jesus is taking too long uh, to uh, finish those final touches on our heavenly places. I've heard a number of people who say, well, I don't know why I'm still alive. Why doesn't Jesus just take me? But then there's other times where it seems like Jesus uh, finishes our places ahead of schedule. And then he takes us home before we and our loved ones are ready. And that's why the words of the psalmist are so important for us to remember. He says, but I trust in you. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. My times are in your hands. Those same hands that held the nails and our sins to the cross. And that's why we can trust him with the timing, even as we're facing troubled times. 
That's why we can trust Jesus even though we don't necessarily understand the day or the way that we're going to heaven. We can trust him because he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the way, said the one who is willing to go the way of the cross to die for our sins. I am the truth, said the one who is willing to be condemned by the lies of others. I am the life, said the one who is willing to die and be buried so he could rise again. Jesus was willing to come to this earth and do all that for us so that one day we could go to heaven and be free from all those things that trouble us in this life. And the good news is we don't just have to wait for him to come at the end of our life or at the end of, our, of the world. He continues to come to us in the meantime. And the way he does that is through his meal. Whenever we gather at his table for the Lord's Supper, he's coming to us to grant us forgiveness and strength and peace that we need for the troubled times in our lives. Through his body and his blood, he comes to us to feed our faith and to starve our fear. And he's going to keep coming to us, that's his promise, until the day he comes for us to take us to our heavenly home. Jesus knows you're coming. He knows when you're coming. And he's preparing a place for you. And when that place is ready, he'll come and take you so that you can be with him. Until that day comes, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in him and what he's done for you, and he'll take care of the rest. Amen.